everybody. I am now in the comments. I don't know how long it will last for, but it's great. Hello, hello, Shark. Okay, let's say hello to people. Dothurlian, Helikin, and Benjamin, uh, Sindra, oh, yeah. Frank is here. Steve Slack is here. Slacking off work, Steve Slack. Slacking <laughs> slack <it> off. <laughs> As is concealed in the comments. No, I'm not. I'm right here. I'm right here. He's here. No. Um, hello, no, Lars. Hello, Drake. Hello, Gabriel. Zolt, welcome, welcome. Richard, oh, hello, everyone. NG Crew says Richard Mitchell, hello. Hello, and good I, well. I'm pretty sure the majority of people currently in the chat I have hugged over the internet. Um, at least, because I think everyone started to clue in that 10 o'clock in the morning, British time, is as log on the comments time. Is it now? Because at one minute to 10 in the morning, I'm like, People are starting to go, where are the spoilers? It's spoiler time. <laughs> 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 to the point that somebody today, oh, who was it? I can't remember the name, I'm sorry. I, I, forgive me, I can't remember the name, but someone said, let's not ask him for a spoiler, let's ask him for a wee hint. <laughs> and I was like, I appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, I appreciate where you're coming they get, from. They get quite, uh, the, the backers get quite <laughs> good at learning the, uh, the buttons to push to get their, their little snippets. Oh, they want the camera. Oh, yes. Well, this is true. The camera wants panned over so I'm not covered by comments. Do you really want it panned over so I'm not covered by comments? Do you really? I, I can kind of lean around the comments. I can give you all like a little, a little so hug. Said, uh, uh, hug all the comments. <laughs> um, yeah, the weird thing is, because if, if we do this now, if we go, if we offset it to that side, everybody watching on YouTube later will be like, why? Why? Why, they why can't they? Why, why can't they sit in the middle why, of the? Why, yeah. Why? What's why wrong with these people? <laughs> Whereas if we do it like now, I think Steve's like, no, it's good. I'm happier not seeing Az's face. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Pavlov's dog. We stop so drilling when we see the, U the YouTube won't have all the comments and the questions. The YouTube will stuff. not have no. all the comments. So if, if we're all over here, it will just look odd. So I am quite covered by comments today because I tried to zoom it out a little so we could see a little more. Jay. You are a bit, aren't you? Um, do you know what? I'll give you a little bit why, more. Why don't you just shuffle over here a bit? Can you shuffle over here? Uh, hello, buddy. We'll come. We'll come. Yeah. Just shuffle over here. There we go. There you go. Oh, is that? Is that better? Hi, Jack. Hi, Hi Az. Says Harlet. Who? Oh, I, I'm, I'm definitely saying that wrong. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Uh, <laughs> better, better, really good. Okay. So we've got 277 in the minute. We're going to let those start to come up a little bit. This, this is a good place. This is a good place, Helikin. I have an announcement. Helikin. Helikin is, Helikin is, is a, a veteran. He's Helik a veteran. Helikin's like myself and Leo, were everywhere at all times. I actually spoiled the trailer the other day on. What day that we get to the on Wednesday. I have no idea. On Wednesday, I put a little teaser for the trailer before it released, a day before it released. And I swear that image was in the comments for about a minute. And then Leo was in the comments. Leo's never in the comments. Nope. Like, what? And he was saying you shouldn't spoil. He things. was telling me I shouldn't spoil. I told him to King get out of the spoil. comments. Well, he doesn't. Want, you know, he doesn't want you to take his crown. It's King true. Of spoil. Yeah, it's uh, he has a mini where he is spoiling. <laughs> and you guys unlo unlocked with the stretch goals. There's no one can take your spoil crime. Yeah, no, you can't take your spoil. Uh, Gabriel, good, good point. For anyone that's looking for the last replay, I have downloaded it and I will upload it to YouTube tomorrow so you can watch Leo's yep. Red Shadows replay. We yep. had to delete it, unfortunately, from Kickstarter because Kickstarter would not let us get this live up and running properly. Yep. Well, that one was hanging around. Uh, Leo did such a good live last night, it broke. It just, yeah, it just uh, wanted, to, wanted to stay. <laughs> wasn't wasn't having any of it no more no more lives that's it set the record it, it back. just wanted to have leo and the, and the gorilla forever yeah. gorillas likes gorillas and um, kickstarter this big perfect yes thank you so yes gabriel is so on the ball gabriel uh, i have something to tell you and everybody else watching but i want to i want to speak personally to gabriel for a minute the opportunity i, for I won't listen then okay the opportunity for <laughs> hugging is happening so i can confirm to you all we'll do an official update within the next 24 hours, probably tomorrow, to say that we are going to be having our first official Mythic Games UK event on Saturday, the 14th of July. Uh, so we are going to Warbore in Bromley in London. That sounds awful, sir. I can't say Warbore very well at all. It brings out Warbore. my slur words. <laughs> Warbore. It's also called Paradise. Oh, it's Paradise just something. Stop there. Cafe. Just, just stop there. It's oh. called Paradise. Because Paradise. they've got a board game cafe. And then they've also got the store in the oh, location. Oh, cool. cool, cool. So you've got a relaxed uh, board game cafe. We can go and get a coffee or a cocktail and play some games. And then upstairs, they have a huge play area um, where you can come. And we are going to take over that play area. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go with Joan of Arc, obviously. We're going to go with Solomon Cain as well. We're bringing a whole bunch of our UK ambassadors. Leo is going to be coming from France. He will be there. This gorgeous gentleman. In, in the flesh, Leo. Uh, yeah. 
You can touch him. You can touch him. You can touch him. Uh, For a modest fee. Uh, yeah, what should we charge to touch Leo? I don't know. Uh, I, I suppose we should, we should just cover the charge of his boun bouncers just to make sure that his bodyguards <laughs> have, have, you know, like, fed and watered. Sounds properly. like an add-on says Helican to touch Leo. <laughs> make it a stretch goal. Okay. Stretch, ah, stretch ah, goal. Ah. No? That was terrible. Oh, that man. was awful. Um, so, 14th of July, Saturday, we'll be at War Boar from 12 midday up until sort of 8 or 9 in the evening. What can you expect to see there? So, you're going to have demos of games? You're going to have a bunch of the team there. So myself, Jack, and Leo will all be there to chat with you guys, play some games with you guys. Uh, we're also going to have a buffet. So you can come and just eat some food. Please do stay. Don't just come and eat some food and then leave. Yeah. It'll be an evening buffet. Um, around the same time we're doing the buffet, we're also going to have a little bit of a presentation. I wouldn't call it a keynote necessarily, but we're going to chat a bit about what's happening with us. And probably for one of the first times, if not the first time, we're going to show some pictures for things that are coming up for Mythic Games. So something that you, if you're at Warbor, I can tell you, you will see things that have not been seen anywhere else. How about that for a tease? Uh, and I'm not talking John of Arc, I'm not talking Solomon Cain. Official spoilers. Official, that sounds like, yeah. You will see official, <laughs> <laughs> fully not endorsed. Just, not just random things that... Leo and I are probably going to end up stuck. We're going to fight, probably. He's in get, my who gets country. To, who gets to spoil first? Yeah. Although I hear 14th of July, someone at UK Games Expo told me this, is a key date in French history. It's like one of the key dates during their revolution. Uh, the day, the name of the day escapes me. Somebody in chat helped me out here. It's not uh, Bastille Day. Is it? it Bastille Day? I never remember. Bastille Day, 14th of July, France. Somebody help me. Someone's got French to know this. I can't my remember. comments may most have. Of, most, of the, uh, most of the French holidays seem to be Catholic holidays. There's Drek, you know, Gabriel and Richard what uh, confirming that, yep, it is indeed Bastille it Day. It is Bastille Day, okay. So we're going to pull Leo. My ancient history, um, ancient history A level still actually still there. occasionally works. Yes, there we go. Dave is confirming, Alchemy is confirming. So that, I'm not sure, how, I'm not sure if Leo's twigged that yet, to be honest with you. He's just excited to get to London. I think on Sunday. If which you're side would he be on though? I don't know. Which side, is, which I, side I, would Leo have been on? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't want to place him. I wouldn't want to place him. Um, so we'll be there. We'll have some goodies as well to give uh, to give away. Just some little treats and stuff for you guys coming. But the big thing will be just a chance to play some games with the team. It's going to be a very relaxed day, uh, and we'll be there for sort of eight or nine hours. So have you seen his mini? Says Steve. Um, Leo's mini. Yes, I'm pretty sure everybody has seen Leo's mini. He is hard to miss. So this isn't this isn't ticketed, is it? Nope. No, it's not Good. ticketed. It's not. Doesn't cost. You just have to turn up. Yes, should have said that. Completely free. Just, just come in. If you're in the store anyway, if you're in the area, it's in the south of London in Bromley. Warbore Games. Just come, say hello, hang out for the day. Um, and we'll put fun. up, we'll put up addresses and everything. We'll yes. Do a proper announcement. Um, later on this evening, or potentially tomorrow, I will do an official update out to everybody. Um, update the Facebook page and everything, so you guys know that's coming. Anyway, we're here to talk rules, Solomon Cain answer yeah, questions and, and see if anyone has any questions and, and things, questions. things they want to they want us to clear up so cool so obviously leo gets to spoil all the nice spoilers we get to talk about the game what's happening in development and what's going new with solomon kane and what you guys have been unlocking with the stretch goals as well because we are incredibly close 877 yeah, well, very close the end of the beast current of adventure the, yeah the beast of bordeaux uh, or possibly should be the Beast of Bordelais up here. I, I was told by our French counterpart that the area around Bordeaux is not called Bordeaux, it's called Bordelais. So I might have to change the title to um, be accurate to the old English folk. Get <laughs> we, wrong. We, we, we do like to be accurate. We're so near 300 viewers, man. Come on, we're just a couple more people to get in for 300. Awesome. We'll, okay. get, there. we'll get there. So Le, le Bordelais, oui, says uh, La Chapelle. Yep, that's, that's what we're told. So, so I've been referencing those in the updates, and uh, and we may end up changing the title just to make sure it's accurate. Oh, oh no! We we'll started something nice. Chacal says, "Do not change the title. Bordeaux was much better than Bordelais." <laughs> 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 um, so, if you have any questions, guys, do me a favor, pop them up in. Oh, I'll get my finger right there. It question, is the Q and A, Q &A button, and because it makes sure that I don't miss any. Um, Alchemy did say in the chat, though, can you say something about the Alpha Wolf stretch goal? Shall we just chat about the Beast of Bordeaux sure. initially? Yeah, sure. The uh, the alpha wolf stretch goal. Well, it, obviously, it adds an alpha wolf, um, the the biggest of the uh, of the wolves, the boss of the wolves, the um, the smarter and more dangerous of the wolves. It's um, whether he is just a big wolf 
or whether he is a werewolf or something else entirely depends on which strand of the story you end up in. Um, one of the things about all these stories, uh, and there was a discussion about this earlier on BGG I was looking at, that, that was talking about we've made stuff up for the stories and that's a bad thing. Well, we ha kind of have to yeah. make stuff up for yeah, the stories, yeah. otherwise you're just playing a linear adventure with mm -hmm. no choice. So we've made up all sorts of bits to go around the stories that, uh, that Robert Howard wrote. And in some cases, we have the beginnings of a story that he wrote, that's a fragment that he did, that wasn't finished when he, yeah. by the time he died. And so we've finished those stories in certain ways. And there's also a few extra ones because they, the cabinet, the people who own the license, were encouraging us to, to explore what could have happened and other things within the style and the atmosphere and the feel of, of the character and the world. Uh, and this is one of those adventures, the, uh, the Beast of Bordeaux, is one of those adventures that we have created that sort of fits in a gap in his history and his things that are appropriate to the time. Because in history, this is the time when there are all sorts of, uh, uh, before and after Solomon Cain, there are quite a few vamp uh, werewolf scares in yeah. France. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there's a Brotherhood of the Wolf movie which takes one of the more famous ones as, a, as, an exa as a starting point. And we took that again because it seemed to be the sort of thing that was in the minds of the, the common folk in, Par in France at the time. Yeah. Um, so we've taken that idea, but then we're not, it's not just one version of that story that you, you follow. There are different things that could be happening. So, so we, we, we have, when I, when I say the, the alpha wolf may just be a big wolf, could be a natural thing, could just be a big, smart wolf, could be a werewolf. Could be alchemist related. Could be could be a some form of evil sorcery because that's certainly <laughs> something that Solomon Cain would not approve of. <laughs> and so there's various different threads, and I'm not going to tell you all of the possibilities. And and some of these may or may not really happen. Who knows? The idea is it's it's too much fun to find out <laughs> for me to spoil all of this. I mean, I, I'm you know I have too many professional spoilers working with me. If I try and do that as well, I'm just on a lose it so I have to go the other way I try not to spoil it. hey if this was America we'd have clear defined rules of responsibility and if you stepped on mine that would be yeah, a, if I a spoiled big anything by yeah. mistake I, I would be in trouble yeah yeah so yeah that the the alpha wolf is the end of the um, beast of Bordeaux story so you've got the the boards to do the forest the Bordelais the wolf pack you've know you will have the wolf the alpha wolf leading a pack of six wolves which is quite <laughs> a naughty combination yeah, yeah. because six of anything is quite a lot on the, uh, the scale that we're, we're doing. And when they work as a team, it's even nastier. You have nice Richard said, the multiple storylines and their effects on later chapters is a real gem in the game. Well done, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that's, that's the fun thing to play with and the fun thing to, to explore is steering your way through and then having things where... Well, so we, we played um, the very first demo we did, which is Skulls in the Stars, and we've played that and you, you get to the end of it and you, and you think, wow, that was, that was great. And, what, and, and actually, we just ended up with the, ver the version of the possible future that was in the story. Yep. And that was really cool because we kind of mm -hmm. played through the story. And then we played again and something very different happened. Yep. And that was like, well, we saw hints of where the novel was and where the novel went. Mm -hmm. And then we just sort of waved at it as we went past and did something different. <laughs> so it's funny, funny you mentioned Skulls in the Stars, Benjamin saying, if the Alpha Wolf is missing a limb, we know that the Traveller is the werewolf. He's already linking adventures together. Oh, yes, together. yes. Well, yeah, um, we never did find his hand. Yeah. Or paw. Paw, oh, <laughs> I love it. Talking about examples of where we've kind of filled the gaps, we, we obviously just had red shadows come out We did, yes. Um, and some people remarked at the fact that they couldn't believe that only one of the five acts was in Africa because you've expanded out so much and explored other options, including the likes of this gentleman, La Costa. Uh, La Costa. So well, he's he's in the he's in the, the story. I mean, but La, you, La you've made him a full on. Well, we're kind of mini boss yeah. kind, of, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, mini boss we, is we've, a great term. We we've got um, in in the story the 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 what, what we have is basically it starts at the first act and the last act are kind of the bulk of what's in the original novel. Um, and um, the first act is sort of in the cave in France. That's the kind of key part where you burn down the, the, the sort of hermit's cottage and so on. The last one is in Africa. But in th there's, a, there's a passage in the book where, uh, where Cain confronts Lelou. Mm -hmm. And Lelou says, 
something like um, uh, you again. Yeah. You've been, you know, I, I, you've been following you all over the place. You were, I, you were kicking in the front door while I was jumping out the back window yeah, yeah. in Florence. You were there in Italy, and I couldn't get rid of you. And then in Spain, you were. You were riding up to the quay just as my ship yeah. sailed away and all of this. And it sounded like a whole series of really exciting adventures that were sort of dealt with in a paragraph in hindsight. And we thought, oh, it's just such a shame. Not Absolutely. To, you know, while we're thinking of what we could expand, what we could add, rather than us invent something completely, this is what Robert Howard described yeah. as happening. We've just made it present rather than hindsight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, and we've set things in, in Florence and, and uh, in Spain and so on so that we've taken the idea, the, the bit he described, and trying to build in the possibility of that happening yep. in your games on the tabletop. I think Frank says, you're fortunate to have an IP owner willing to give you so much latitude. And I think, yes, it's a combination of them being open to us and also us, thankfully, doing some really good stuff that they were just blown away by because we were really defining Solomon Cain for the 21st well, century. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're helping to do that. And also, they want to explore the, the other things they can do with it. I mean, they've, they've, they've talked about all sorts of... Um, I don't know what I'm going to allow to say, so I'm not going to say any details, but they're talking about all sorts of ways of exploring Solomon Cain and, and, and elaborating on that. This uh, game has inspired a lot of thoughts. There's an Solomon awful Cain lot of interesting go. stuff there. There's some really cool things. If they all, ha Who knows what's going to happen what's not, but there's some really cool stuff going on with, uh, with the idea, the, the world of Solomon Cain. <laughs> Trevor says, let's have a kid's show with Cain and friends. Cain <laughs> <Keen> and friends. <laughs> Puritan plus. What did you learn at school today, guys? Sword fighting. <laughs> I was just thinking, it's like you know, have you been naughty, Timmy? <laughs> oh my goodness. I was thinking for the darker version of that. Um, says so Steve. Steve says, if nothing else, it sold a lot of Solomon Cain books. I know the Savage Tales did sell out on a couple of websites. A few people um, yeah. mentioned that to me, which is and that's good because it's good stories. Um, as anyone who watched the Patrice live with Patrice and Leo, I mean, he's doing a PhD on Robert E. Howard's work. Yeah. You know, for, for such a, a small amount of short stories in the grand scheme of things, it had a huge impact. And I know Patrice is, is obviously very much into that. And I think the more people we can get out and share that with is, is fantastic. The mm. Red Shadows uh, scenario seems like the Kane equivalent to Conan's story, Art of the Dragon. I don't think I've read that story, actually. Mm. Um, Conan I read was a long time ago. But I yeah, remember. I have not dabbled in, in Conan in about Well, he did write both. Years. So it has to be said, he did write both, so it may be that he was plagiarizing himself a touch. <laughs> so that was such a good story. I'm just trying to think, um, we have, we've hit over the 300, we've hit 315, and everyone's chiming about Leo's Magic 300. Magic 300. Spoilers. Um, I was asked something today, and I gave a very minute little hint. Um, is the Red Shadows really in reference to Az's beard? I'd like to. So I'd like to think that Robert E. Howard had that much foresight Just looked that ahead there'll be thought, a magical ginger beard in the future and we should honour it <laughs> with the most epic nemesis chase across continents. Yes, I, I think so. I think you're right with that. Um, Sounds credible. Yeah. Very, very small spoiler. What's to come after Beasts of Bordeaux? I will tell you that a lot of people have been asking um, for some way to handle all these stretch goals they're getting, all these new minis, all these new adventures that we've been adding in. We'll be ensuring that you have a nice, gorgeous looking way of doing that. Say no more. That's coming in the very, very, very near future. Um, along with some other stuff too. Uh, a satchel. How good would a satchel be? How good would a backpack shape like a Puritan hat for all your games be? I was thinking carrier bags, but I mean, you know. Car whatever. Carrier whatever. Bag, yeah, just a couple of old bags? Tesco bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever, whatever floats your boat. A carrier hat, Benjamin. A carrier hat. Keen's treasure chest. Okay, we're going to go and have a look at some questions. Although, if you want to put more questions up here, would you like to chat a little bit about this? This is something that we hadn't planned. We're not going to be filming now, but it's something we may come back to during the Pledge Manager. Um, before you ask, we are going to have a gameplay video out before the end of the campaign, hopefully, um, at the first half of next week, all being well. Um, we do finish on Thursday next week, but we'll make sure you guys have a chance to look at gameplay a little bit before that. Every little helps, says Algorithm. Every little helps. Um, but I thought it might be a good idea because we have a bunch of villagers here to show a little bit about how this, we can talk about what it's from and how this this was going to, how you designed this or how this was going to play. Okay. Yeah. Um, this so what I'm looking at here. This was, uh, can you see this? Yes, yeah. you can see this. Um, this this was uh, um, one, of the, uh, one of the scenes from the Devil's, the Devil's, Devil's Death's Riders. Black Riders. Death's, Death's Black Riders. I'm mixing up Death's Yeah, you've got Satan and the witch, witch fight, or the, 
yeah, the witch Castle of the Devil, Castle, Castle of the Devil, the Devil oh. and Death's Black Riders muddled up. We don't know anything about Castle of the Devil. That's not something. It's a that's story. Happening. It's a story. What what Mr. Howard wrote. Well, <laughs> that nice Mr. Howard wrote several stories. Well, Jack nearly stepped into Spoilerville there. Oh my word! No, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm contractually obliged to allow you you and Leo to do all of that. Anyway, this is part of Death's Black Riders, um, and in the story, the the riders. It's the, the riders are uh, in some way linked to this old mine and the villagers, are, the locals who are being terrorised by them are, uh, turn up mob-handed to go and, and, and deal with this and because there are missing children and there's all sorts of problems going on and they think that maybe the best thing to do would be to um, you know, go, go and see what's in the mine and then somebody starts having a, a great suggestion that they should just seal the entrance and, and everyone's dead anyway. They can't find them. They just seal oh, well. the entrance. That'll be it. Yeah. And, of course, Solomon Cain thinks, well, that means you'll never know what the truth is. And yeah, he's not, he, a, fan he's not a fan of that one. So he, he, he persuades them all to go off inside. And, and this is part of the caverns we've got here. And this is a good demonstration of a few things. One of them is it shows you that um, the, uh, there are certain areas on some boards that you simply can't move into. They're just blocks. And this gives you quite a lot of different behavior on, this, on the board because of all the different pathing that you then have to have in and out of these, these barriers. So when, you have, um, when you're, you're dealing with shadows, for example, and, and virtues trying to block the shadows, you've got a very different set of, of paths that the shadows have to move along. And you can block them completely by sticking a, a, a virtue right in the middle of the, the path there. Um, so you can, uh, and then depending on how much danger you can suffer and uh, how many virtues you can get on the board to, to uh, remove these shadows, you can make a, a very different environment for Solomon Cain and the other, the other trans folk who go and help him explore the caverns. So in this scenario, you have, um, there are a few scenarios in the caverns. This, in this particular one that we were thinking of, there are a number of explore tokens dotted about and these represent areas that, um, that look promising because you're trying to find the way through to wherever the horsemen are based, somewhere in these caverns. And is, this is, is presumably after it's got base. some information. That's right, you've got some, no, this is halfway through the whole thing. Yeah. So they, they, you, you've, you've, been, uh, you've had all sorts of run-ins with them yeah. and, and they keep just riding off into the distance. And now and so you've got you've to now actually got go to some, where they live. You've got to, because you can't keep up, but you, you can't catch them. So you're going to find their lair and chase them down. And you've got all these villagers hang, kind of hanging on, mm -hmm. and they want to explore the, tab the caverns too, but it's very dangerous and they keep being rock falls, and, mm -hmm. and, and you don't want anybody to get killed hunting oh, okay. in this. So you've got to try to explore the place, mm -hmm. not, get, not let the townsfolk get themselves killed by poking at the dangerous Plus, bits yeah. too much. So they are, they can help you. They can help you, they but, can help you yeah. but they can also, they're not very good at exploring because <laughs> they're really just a bunch of villagers and they're not really, uh, whereas Solomon Cain's good at everything. So he, he's much more careful knitting. and he has the virtues helping him and so on, which the villagers don't. So whilst it's faster, if they do some of the looking as well, mm -hmm. it's quite possible one of them will have a large boulder squish him, which is not good. And the idea, just oh, I should say, guys, of course, these are still just prototype boards. So that's that right. We, yeah. we know, we're aware that not everything is matching up perfectly. This is something that we're going to be working on in, in, the, in the future. Um, what's that little boy doing? Is he jumping walls? Oh, I was just going to go. Uh, so yes, prototype these, these are this prototype is, boards. This is us. Oh, gives boy. us something to play. <laughs> it gives us something to play with. First of all, no defense against flying. No defense board. against flying cover. Put him on the board. It's safer up there. Um, so yes, these are these are just um, these are what we're working with at the moment. They were done. Uh, so that we have something to, to test this scenario and to test this, uh, this sort of shapes of mm -hmm. the board and so on. Um, uh, this, this light blue area here, quick question that come up from Helican is essentially, sure. it's a puddle, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a puddle, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, idea, the idea of these is some of the boards have areas, excuse me, areas which are obviously a different terrain type. And the discussion that we had a week ago about mm -hmm. terrain, um, in some scenarios, it won't make any difference. These are just treated the same as every other area. In other scenarios, there will be a difference in the way those areas behave. Yep. And there'll be a discovery card that explains that in this scenario, this particular type of terrain, this area with this type of terrain is, has this effect. Yep. 
whatever that might be, whether it's useful or, or unhelpful. Um, and that's why we have different distinctive different bits on the board, so that we can use them if we want to, but if we don't, then they're just pretty. Mm -hmm. And something I guess it might be worth talking about a little bit, I had a question um, about how uh, attacks and tests work. And one of the things that came about through the conversation is these objectives, these expiration tokens, mm. um, or indeed objectives in any form, whatever they may take, um, NPCs, these characters and villagers can interact with them or even um, be guided towards them, depending on what the virtues do or also what darkness cards do. It um, depends on the scenario. Yeah. Depends on the scenario. Sometimes, sometimes Solomon Kane is trying to do something on his own, and the other people around are either in the way or they're oblivious, or they're not really yeah. trying to do it. Or in this case, they are actually able to actively help him. So it depends on the on the situation. Sometimes they interact with the uh, exploration tokens, and other times and the environment just, and things. Around. And the environment, so on. And other times they're just sort of in the way, or they're people you need to be saving yeah. because. Or, or, or actually, in some cases, they're people you need to be talking to or people you need to be interacting with in yeah. another way. And the rule with, the, although the shadows are really just out to get Solomon, and they don't really care about the, the normal villagers, if they're in the same area as a villager, mm -hmm. sneaking up behind this little boy, um, the villagers can sense the, the fear and the foreboding and the fright of the presence of the shadows even if the shadows don't trigger an event or do anything else. So what it means is, whilst the shadow is in the area, that figure can't do anything. They can't move, they They've can't... They've got the chills, they're they just can't the chills, they're they're just, they're they don't know what it is. Some, it's that feeling when someone walks over your, your grave, as yes. they say, they ah, get this shiver okay. up your... Yeah, yeah. It's really uncomfortable, and they're not... And, and they're basically just... They're not... For a moment, they're, they're not with it. They're not... They're, not, mm -hmm. they're just yeah. scared out of their way. So that means that Solomon King can't talk to them, they can't move. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we all take a moment to all give Ben Clapperton a very slow clap? He said that after you said they're shivering, and he said they're multiplying. He was trying to do some grease, some grease music. Multiplying. He was trying to. Um, I'm not going to. No, I'm just not going to. I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Ben, I'm going to pretend it's, it's fatigue you're getting you, buddy. Sorry, Jake. It's, <laughs> like, it's I'm glad one person got it. I'm with you, Ben. I'm with you, buddy. Greece was uh, Greece lightning. 30 years old, is that right? 30 years old, like a month ago? I think that's right. Was it? 20 years old, 30, 40 years old, 40 years old. 40 years old. Is that old. right, 40 years old? Gosh. Um, I had a little listen to a couple of songs from it. I never liked it as a kid, but as I get older, I kind of... Anyway, I live in Newton-John, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a segue. I want to talk about a little thing that I want to make clear on, going on from this point. Greece lightning. The obje <laughs> The objectives that the uh, enemies on the board have will not always be Solomon Cain. They may be moving around doing different things, and depending on how Solomon Cain has entered, um, or the condition of the current chapter, depending on what you've done before, they may be doing completely different things from just hunting Solomon Cain down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they, they may be busy going, uh, you know, summoning unpleasantness or, or, mm -hmm. or going about murdering villages on their own or, you know, whatever, whatever evil monstrosities do. And... Solomon Cain happens along and very likely decides to stop the evil monstrosities being evil monstrosities. That's kind of his <laughs> trademark. Cool. But yes, I mean the 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 fact that we, the things we've been showing you have been very fairly straightforward in this. The I mean the, the shadows nearly always want to just get Solomon Cain because that's what darkness creates yep. them for is to set them off to go and make his life a misery. But that's not always. I mean the the bad guys. We, we have over here. We got pirates and pirates and uh, all sorts of tribal warriors. We got a couple of new minis because we're, we're going to be filming for you guys some uh, blue flame of vengeance. Mm. Um, very soon to share that with you. And we got some new minis in. We got Jack in. Oh, Jack Conster. Look what at a him. hero! Such a legend. Like, ha! Take I, that. I absolutely love his base. I don't like. I need to zoom in as far as I can. But there's a little. Like a core, like a sh look at that, sh look at those shells. They're oh, it's beach. Uh, yeah. It's a beach. Because this, this is taken, of course, in Blue Flame Vengeance, where Life's there is beach. a, nice, <laughs> there is a beach scene, um, depending on which path you take. Maybe depending on where you go, yes. Uh, Solomon Cain on Tinder, I always swipe left. <laughs> Oof. That's a bit mean, Trevor. You've got to give, give Solomon a super like man again. Uh, he's got water in his boots. <laughs> There's some uh, there's some snakes and some boots I think on some of the African tribesmen actually. Should we talk a little bit about red shadows? It came out yesterday. 
He did. Uh, shall we chat a little bit more about what we're, guys can expect in Red Shadows? Um, what you've added in? Most of, most of what we've added, apart from kind of parallel paths through the stories and alternate endings and that kind of thing, um, most of what we've added are the parts in Europe before he gets to Africa yeah. because they're the bits that were alluded to that weren't explored in the original story. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've th this, this, uh, th the lovely idea of uh, Lulu jumping out of the back window when mm -hmm. Kane kicks in the front door, yeah. that kind of stuff. That's where we've been going with the, extra, the whole kind of extra scenes. Um, the, there are quite a few little detail wrinkles about whether you meet people or don't meet people and the sequence you meet people in. And that can have quite a big effect on what happens further down the line. It's, we, we have to strike a balance between every single possible permutation, which means there will be 300 chapter cards in every yep. act, um, and, and having some things that come back. And it's, it's, um, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting balancing act because we've got lots and lots of, what we tried to get is the most starkly different things. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's a very yep. noticeable different path when you, when you go down um, a different route. Um, but we've, we've still got the, um, there's lots of, int it's interesting how much difference you can make by just not having one main character. Sure. If you remember, we were doing the, the ones where he was running away from the cannibals. Yep. That can have just a few tribesmen, or it can have the tribesmen and the chieftain and the tribal champion. Yep. And that, <laughs> excuse me, the difference that makes <laughs> is just insane. Whenever I first came down to play test that before we filmed, yeah. uh, I was warned that it can go pretty bad. It um, can, yes. You need to keep your head on a swivel um, and focus on the objective because if you waste too much time, yes. it can just turn. And one of the points whenever our, myself, Karina and Babis played is we did make a decision to leave because we were hidden and one of the tribesmen moved into our space and we focused purely on getting to the objective and running. And if we had waited a single turn, yeah. we could have survived that. Because we ended up dying. Spoiler, it's been out for over a week now. Uh, yeah. We ended up dying. We got hunted down because we failed to really maintain that hidden status. And we had the champion and the chief and all the tribesmen after us. And, and we were goes two spaces Sorry. away. Yeah, it, it can go horrible real fast. But that's, I mean, that gives you an example of, of it's, not just, um, it's not just about the story. Although telling the story is a big part, and the telling the story and then talk, you know, discussing all of that is, is an important part. But also, it's a, it's a game with, with the puzzle and the play and the how do you do this? And, yep. the you know, do you stay hidden while the sentry's sort of standing right next to you and you're kind of cowering in yep. the long grass trying to hope he doesn't spot you and then hope he goes off and does some mm -hmm. other patrolling somewhere else? Or do you just make a break for it and leg it as soon as he comes too close you yeah. know and th there's lots of decisions like that in throughout the game mm -hmm. and one thing i'll say as well because there's a bit of chat going on a mm. mythical mythic. um, in board game mythic. geek we have a, a bunch of awesome guys a couple of a couple of things on board game geek i saw recently that was really cool and um, one of our backers has put a chrono chronological uh, timeline one of those board. things one of those things a timeline and um, for as close to kind of what we think the Solomon Cain timeline is. Um, unfortunately, there's no specific answer for it, um, but you can go on to BGG on the forums there and you can see that timeline. Um, a bunch of other people have started sharing things on there as well. We had a new micro badge, got made oh, cool. by a member of the, the board oh, game Geek community. Just made a micro badge without so much as saying anything, dropped me a little message and I saw it, oh, it, was, it was fantastic. Cool. Uh, and one of our members of the community also did a nice little four page breakdown of all the different minis you can get in the game and what uh, stories, what adventures each one of those belong to, mm, cool. which is great to see. So there's a lovely community on BGG just chatting things through and talking about the game and already starting to, to bubble stuff over, which is which is great. Um, shall we go and get to some questions? I think we probably need to. We've got lots okay. of questions. We've got a bunch of questions here. We've got a bunch of them. Not, not too uh, many. Yeah, That's all right. The way. We, okay. don't have to be here, but we don't have to be here past midnight. Now, I unfortunately, I'm sorry, guys, I do not have the ability to click and bring the questions up. One of the downsides on to the screen, having yeah. this, this awesome setup here is I can't do it here, so I'll do my best to clearly enunciate the questions and make sure everyone knows what we're talking about. In your best BBC announcer voice. Oh, BBC, I don't know if I've ever done a BBC announcer voice. That give it a go, be give it a go. Like a News on 10 Imagine, style, like Imagine you're wearing a dinner jacket. Oh, shoo. I nearly swore there. I nearly, I've never worn a dinner jacket before. I got all excited. I well, got just, all just imagine. Just imagine. They used to wear dinner jackets on the radio. <laughs> on the radio? Yeah. Not yeah. really couldn't see BBC, them. yeah. 
Did they just say they were wearing dinner jackets, or did you know? No, I, th I think well, I've seen photographs of them. But they also then they also. I mean, this is in in more innocent times. They used to have a ventriloquist who was on the radio. It was quite well known. Okay. With a dummy, a ventriloquist on the radio. No. Oh, shut up. No, that's true. No, shut that's up. True. It's absolutely true. I don't it know. Is absolutely Everyone true. has gotten distracted by the thought of time uh, of duck tales of legend, trying to have some time times of legend duck tales. Uh, we talked about it. This is not the first time this has come up because I've talked about that's this in Doug comments. Jester. Um, Doug Jester no, it this wasn't Doug Jester actually, but I know it's a it. Duck and it's not. It, that's again, it's demarcation. The, the only person allowed to go on about ducks is, is Doug duck. Jester. The reason I know this came up is because my comment, which was the statement I stand by, is the only way we will do a DuckTales game is if I can have <laughs> a giant Scrooge McDuck swimming pool piece of terrain full of gold coins. Okay. As long as I can have that, the mold for that would be a bit ridiculous. That could be done to the Telekins. We would just do the swimming pool and then we would do plastic coins separate because you'd have to be able to sink your minis in or hand in. We would. We, we would, wouldn't we? We would, of course, absolutely. Nothing for the best. If Ben was watching, We'll That's the that $18 million dollar stretch goal. That's the it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. So, Luis, Luis says, there have been some talk about preferred ranged for weapons, yes. but not much has been explained on that mechanic. Can you give some more detail on how it works, maybe with some examples? Very simple. Um, weapons, ha when you're in the same area as someone or adjacent to them, you can fight. I think we have it. Yeah, some good examples so of different if weapons. we say... <coughs> let's make some space here. Would you like would you like a spear person and a, a sword and yes. dagger person? Let's say here is a sword person. And do we have anybody we let's say we have him. So if we have what can you see on there? You can see on here. So we've got someone with um, a sword. Actually he's let's, let's do this, it's clearer. Somebody with a spear. Somebody with a spear. A spear wants to be at a distance, doesn't want to be there it's too close he wants to fight there so his preferred distance is fighting adjacent he'll get a plus one bonus for doing that very straightforward he'll fight as normal with no bonus if he's in the same area so he gets no bonus if he's at no bonus if, he wants to be. if he's at the wrong there's two places you can be he can be adjacent yep. or he can be in the same area further away he doesn't have an further away he's out of out of combat range yep. so if you're in combat range you're in in the same area or adjacent if you've got no weapons, so you're fighting with your bare hands, or you've got a dagger, then you want to be in the same area. That's your preferable range, because you want to be right up close to somebody. Mm -hmm. You can just about reach from here, but you don't get any bonus. So it's the other way around. So it's the other way around. Sense. It's, it's your, your ideal it's distance. It's your ideal distance for fighting with the weapon. If it's a short weapon, if it's your fists or it's a knife, you want to be right on top of somebody. If it's your spear or a sword, you want to be adjacent to them. So you've got a little bit of distance to yep. them. And it's very simple. It means it means you get plus one if you're at your preferred range. And what, what's very interesting is when you start getting fights between people with different weapon ranges that they prefer. So you get them stepping out and then stepping in again and then and then moving off here. And, and then fights start to move around quite a lot, which I rather like. Okay. And we've obviously seen the musket African Solomon model. Uh, yes. Has much been done in terms of what that could, because Helican's asking, can Solomon choose to use his sword for melee or musket for ranged, or if he has both? If he has, if he has a musket, the thing about the thing about um, guns in this period is that they are one-shot weapons. They take a long time to reload, and in the context of a fight, they won't get reloaded. So Solomon has two pistols on his belt. So the most shots you'll get in a fight is two. It, with a musket, he's got one shot, and then he's not going to have much chance to reload. Very rarely he might, but it's not a common yeah. thing. So he's got to pick and choose when he does this. And so the musket's obviously got a nice long range. Um, but it will be a, a discovery card that lists the musket as a thing he can use in that mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. And that's a one-use thing. So okay. when you shoot that, it's gone. And will pistols and muskets have their own preferred ranges? Uh, pistols, pistols work as a... Pistols work in, in comp normal melee range because they are very inaccurate weapons sure. and they're the kind of things you'd discharge extremely close ranges. Um, shot m muskets are longer ranged, but they don't do very well at indefinite range. So basically, they get worse the further away you are. Okay. So yes, they have all our preferred ra preferred ranges. And I don't know if it's something we have really talked about in great detail yet, but will we have line of sight when it comes to things like muskets or thrown weapons? Um, there is the, the only 
maps which have blockages on like this don't need muskets because they're the wrong scene sure so i think all of the scenes that have muskets in are quite open because it's african savannah because it's african savannah it's, yeah. so i don't think we need a line of sight it's about range not line of sight because yeah. we assume that you can see because there's yeah. lack of stuff in the way because although we do have the musket saw and it is going to be he's sp the, the reason he we have that many is he's for adventures. those adventures so that's right you, the, the, the time you'll have those issues i think will be limited and um, benjamin we're, I think we're talking about shooting i might as well bring this up now can you shoot through spaces with friendly slash enemy units at the moment you can yes yeah something something to play test through some yeah. more we have we haven't uh, we haven't been stress testing the um, the, the sort of accidentally shooting friendlies and so on it seems almost like it doesn't really fit with Solomon Kane. Mm -hmm. It would only appear if it was a dramatic thing and it would it seems kind of counter that yeah. he would ever do it. Mm -hmm. And I think the pirates who have pistols wouldn't care. Yeah, yeah. seems all right, right? Um, Benjamin asked, how thick will the map tiles be? Will they be like boards in Mythic Battles Pantheon or cardboard like the ships in Mythic Battles Pantheon Poseidon expansion, cardstock, etc.? I've not seen the final spec, but I would expect at least two mil board. That would be my guess. But as I said, I haven't seen the final spec. Um, we are well aware that there is a huge amount of tiles in the game, because obviously we have a lot of different countries and adventures to cover. And yeah. so we have been spending some time looking at different options, but we have not finalized it yet. But as soon as you guys, as soon as we have, yeah, we'll you'll have an update from us. We'll, um, get, we'll get more samples back from the... Um, from the factories and see what they got because there's, there's a million kinds of board and mm -hmm. paper and facing and all sorts of all sorts of variables so we'll, we'll see what they've got you super wanted to head to the factories in china didn't you <laughs> <laughs> well ben and i, I do have, ben would love to go i have i have been to many printers over the years and i because it was you that talked to me about the drying like the, yeah, the, the yeah, racks the drying and racks rooms and racks and yeah, racks yeah, and yeah and so and the, well, the weird ones the one of the oddest place when i when i went to the printers one of the things I found strangest but in hindsight you it just had to be the case was um, was the uh, was the paper storage rooms mm -hmm. because they they get paper and they, they get a tree they mm -hmm. chop a tree up really small they squash it into pulp they make it into paper okay. and then they make them into these huge reels like giant toilet reels but yeah. they're sort of like 15 you know okay. sort of 10 feet yeah. across and then they stack them <laughs> like trees Upwise up, just to <laughs> salt the wood. And then, so you go into this warehouse, which is like being in a forest with very straight trees. <laughs> and I just thought that was really bizarre. They go all the way through this very long winded process to get back to pretending to be trees. Uh, so yes, we will we, we will confirm that in due time. Um, I think Glenn's asking again about linen, linen finish on boards again. We, we have to um, see how much you well, guys with, unlock with, and then yeah, we have to I mean, kind of get the final. With, uh, with linen finish, I think in both uh, mythic battles and um, I can't remember what's happening with Joan of Arc but it was rather than make it a stretch goal we just thought well we'll do it if it's what we think we should do we, we, you know we make the best version we can so we weren't you know you see a lot of a lot of games where you know we're upgrading from one and a half mil board to two mil board and we thought well we'll just use two mil board if we like it yeah. so you'll notice that's not a thing we do you know we, we generally we don't waste time saying we'll upgrade upgrade from 200 gram card to 250 gram card no, to 300 gram no. card we, we know we want quality pick the um, stuff we want yeah. yeah um so they don't glare yes i'll tell you right now glenn right now I am a huge fan of board tiles that don't glare, um, <laughs> so I think that that's high on my priority list. As a, as a question, if you guys are interested in production and talking about different options and this kind of thing, we could always have Erwan on um, at some point mm -hmm. to chat on, on the show, maybe in the pledge manager time. It's worth noting that Erwan actually did a fantastic written interview um, where you can actually see like six different stages of Solomon Cain as he was kind of being sculpted right. and printed and tested on our Facebook page and also on Board Game Geek. You'll find links under notes um, or on Board Game Geek, you'll find a forum thread with a bunch of interviews with all of the team. We did a video interview with yourself, Jake, but we did a we did written interview. Written interview with lots of yeah. six people. Yeah, we had Gillian, we had Leo and Benoit did one together, we had Stefan and Erwan did one together, we had the guys from Cabinet yep, did one, yep, and right. we had Patrice, our Patrice. expert, and Robert yep. E. Hard do one. If you're interested, there is one very great detail Erwan goes into talking about the manufacturing process and the testing we've done to get where we are to achieve the detail that we're aiming for with the minis. Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> Do you guys want to see the virtues again? I know Le Leo always gets to show the new stuff. I um, think she's she's my favorite of them. Hard to choose, but I think she's uh, just There she is. 
just there insane. Look at her. Absolutely gorgeous. We haven't got we haven't got the shepherd though. We haven't got the shepherd. No, no. sadly, because I think he might be my favourite miniature in the whole. It's certainly my favourite mortal. Benjamin's asking if we can do little voices for the virtues. Little voices. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like they would have a f like strong spiritual, soft but strong voices. I'm not sure. I, I get the I, I, I get know. the impression. I, I imagine them as not speaking. Yeah. I just imagine this. You just know what they want. You just feel. You just know what they yeah. want. They they they're there, and you just know that you have failed to be yeah. prudent enough, yeah. or you've yeah. done a really good job. Yeah. Telepathic. Has anyone ever played uh, Bioshock? Any Bioshock Infinite or Bioshock One or Two fans in the house? Um, they have this feeling to me like the Big Brothers from Bioshock, whereas they don't talk ever. They just you know they're there. <laughs> They've got that overwhelming feeling that you just sense them even before you can see them. Um, okay, some more questions. Gabrielle said, could be useful to share some hints about the use in the play of shopkeepers and the possession of the corpse, would, how they would be represented. There were some backers concerned about those things. So for anyone that doesn't know, Red Shadow was released yesterday. Um, of course, we're going to spend four of those um, acts out of the five chasing Lulu through various parts of Europe. So we had to add some extra detail to that. The shopkeepers were part of that. And then also if you saw the trailer, I'd love to know what you guys thought of the trailer, by the way, mid campaign trailer hype, first time for us mm -hmm. doing something like that. Yep. Um, you saw, if anyone who paid close attention, because you do blink and you miss it, you saw a, a, a recently killed uh, tribes, tribesman, um, and the mm -hmm. longer going into a kind of trance and that tribesman's hand twitching just for a second and then yep. it's gone so gabriel's asking a bit in terms of mechanics do we have any hints about how we'll see them on the board um in terms of mechanics um it, it's it's part of it's part of no longer's behavior yeah in in the uh in in mechanical sense in in terms of the board and what we do with the miniatures because someone asked about whether we're going to have a special miniature for the the reanimated yeah. body he's actually only been dead two minutes yep. so he actually just looked like a normal tribesman and that's the only time we ever use him so it seemed like a bit of yeah. a waste to do that the shopkeepers mm -hmm. that uh, he mentioned as well they are for if I remember rightly it's the Florentine part the Florentine act where there's several Solomon Kane's trying to find where Lulu's run off to so he's talking to locals and he's, there's one bit when he's in this sort of series of merchants he has to deal with and find out from them by talking yes, to all the different merchants what's yeah. going on um, and so that's why we had the merchants was was for that series of of explorations mm -hmm. and because because what's happening is is uh, Lulu set himself up with a sort of with a sort of protection racket and a sort of dodgy dealings so he's, yeah. so he's a sort of minor mafiosi and, and, <laughs> and so Kane knows this is going on or something yeah. is going on so he's not being a pirate, he's being a sort of the equivalent on land. So that's what that's all about. So he's trying to find out from them. Yeah. And, and anyway, so. Okay, Gabriel, hopefully that answers your question, gives you a bit of insight into what you're going to see with Red Shadows. Joist says, can you explain how the game will be fun to play through 30 slash 40 scenarios with the same four virtues without them actually upgrading in any way? As I understand it, the virtues don't change throughout the campaign. Nope. So gameplay-wise, the player's actions never change, right? Uh, well, the, 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 the actions from your board and your cards don't change, but the actions available to the uh, to you may change depending on whether the discovery cards give you I extra really things. I really want to spoil something about what we're going to film. I can spoil it, right? Go on. So we're going to... Oh, yeah, go on. We've got, we got the loyal people here. So because... Jack's so Shut right, and we're gonna. Mouth. If you watch the game with Karina, Babis, and myself, we had the hidden mechanic introduced for the first time. We also had discovery cards, which allowed us to sprint, take extra movement, and um, at the cost of increasing the danger because we were being brash with our actions. So, although your virtue actions won't change, the chapter will have unique aspects, and one that we're going to be filming and sharing with you guys um, involves using uh, talk at 
actions mm -hmm. to not just uh, negotiate or get information out of people, but to actually intimidate them to the point that potentially they can't act against you or you're going to make them lose their guard so you can get uh, additional fight actions against them or additional bonuses so you can outman them. <laughs> this is the this is the sort of Arnie quip in the middle yeah. of the fight. This is the that's it. Witty the, banter, you know, the like witty banter, and the and the sort of the the um, the, the subtle one-liners and the you know. Yep. Um, I told him to stick around. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you said, was it? What did you do with him? I let him go. I let him go. The, yeah, <laughs> <I let> him <laughs> go. <laughs> you promised you'd kill me last. I lied. <laughs> so. Outside of the virtues abilities, you will have always this ever-changing, ever-present discovery card aspect to every chapter and every act that's going to tailor your approach completely and give you this um, shared pool of resources that each of you can use. And it means that the virtues always have stuff to do as well as donating and reserving. And the, the other thing is that even if, the, um, even if the, there was no change at all, everything else changes. Yeah. yeah. So you're trying to solve a different puzzle with the same tools. So you get you better at dealing with the tools, you get better at finessing your hand management and your, your mm -hmm. management between you of the different things you have available. But the puzzle you're solving is different each time. So even if you didn't have the extra things that you do, mm -hmm. you still have a different puzzle to solve for the same thing. You don't need to change every aspect of everything to have an in interesting different challenge. You just have to change enough of it. and that's what we've done. Yeah. The, the other thing to remember is that we still need to keep the game easy to learn and easy to save and come back next week and pick up from where you left off. If we were to change um, all the, the, the actions every time, it, it just wouldn't be tangible. When we're talking about over 30 different acts you're going to be playing well, through, to have that core stream. Well, plus, plus we don't know what sequence you're going to play them in. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to just say, well, this is the one you play when you're ex expert and you've got ramped up and you've got a deck that's 25 cards and you've done all these extra things because that might be the only expansion that you buy or the favorite what your favorite story so that's the one you go to first so it's designed to come in anywhere yeah. i mean like the the stories uh how it wrote the stories in a different order from people think is chronological from the point of view of someone came yeah. although several of the stories don't actually have anything you can really date them by yeah. so it's all a bit fuzzy but that's the idea you can come in anywhere mm -hmm. and it's always going to work Plus, in the background, we've got, I mean, in, in, in context of the, the IP, we've got uh, Solomon Kane is never really any different. He's always got. The doesn't get more just, muscular. He doesn't, he doesn't get more muscular. Any. He doesn't get fast. He's always, he's this, he he's of, always the world's best swordsman. Yeah, he, he comes in fully fledged, maxed out level bonuses. He's just, born just that way. You know, he's just, that's how he is. That's yeah. how you introduce him. And the only difference is there are a couple of times he has a musket. <laughs> and. and he either has he either has the staff from the longer or he doesn't yeah. and that's it that's the only difference you ever yeah. see and the, immor the the virtues are immortals and i think if they were going to level up <laughs> they'd have done it a few <laughs> millennia ago so they're kind of the way they are so it doesn't really make any sense yeah. i mean the very early version did have the virtues changing um and it just felt wrong because yeah. it just uh, why why should it be learning yeah. how to do something different in the context of this so Whilst I'm not against the idea of leveling up and changing characters and so on, and, and without wanting to spoil anything, this. this may happen in other things, but yeah. the, in this context, it just <laughs> didn't make sense. Craig says, yeah, but leveling up is fun. Leveling up is fun. Check out Joan of Arc. You get experience. Yeah, you yeah level Joan of Arc has leveled times. up. You and got in multiple paths, you holy, unholy. You can, in oh, projects to be announced in the future. Oh, and possibly, possibly, maybe mentioned in I don't know what's going to happen to War Ball, but you never know. Oh, my word. He's dabbling with the spoilers. I, I, dabble, I am not. I'm skirting <laughs> around. I'm dancing around the edges. I'm not going to go in. There. But in things we are working on now, in addition to this, other things that are coming up at some point in the future. So, yes leveling up having experience all of that stuff it's great in context when it fits i just don't think it fits here it doesn't fit the background no. we are working in the world we are in i will put a little shout out to what jack said we will be at war war games in bromley in london on the 14th of july if you'd like to find out a little bit more about what jack is hinting at but what we have in the works see, in the background see, i don't hinting, know hinting. i don't know what he was going to do there <laughs> i haven't been told what's going to be what's going to be uh, spilled spoiled and dabble, dabble. splashed across the head world dabble. headlines yes gen con is still a little bit away shark we still it have uh, we have plenty of time before gen con to uh, hint at things 
Absolutely. Okay. Helican asks, if Robert E. Howard was still alive and played Saul oh, McCain... Oh, 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 oh. I, I've just had a brilliant idea. I'm going to spoil something. Oh, my bluffing heck. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to give them... I'm going to give them a... I'm going to give them a clue okay. to the oh, next you're gonna game. Oh, you're going to give them their clue? I'm going to give them a clue to the next oh, game we're going to do. Oh, man. It's going to be... Any gonna the, <laughs> in, in previous campaigns, I used to actually, because there wasn't, we didn't have ads, and, and Leo couldn't spoil all the time. So I had to occasionally do a few spoilers. So I've kind of got a little bit of... But mine were always really tangential. So um, what I'm going to tell you about the next game, after yeah. Solomon Kane, yeah, yeah, the, the next project, it. is Coconut. I have said enough. And I'll tell you right now, if any of you are diligent enough and do your research enough, that is enough. To That's enough. To get exactly where, uh, oh man, pirates, what a game. Uh, a no, horse no, this King Arthur. No, no, let, I, no let, let's, let's see how long it takes them. I have faith, actually. Wow. You're going to have, gonna have to go way deeper than that, Mark. Cast away. When I said, when I said tangential, I wasn't kidding. But that anyway. is enough. Oh, that is good. That, so is, that is a tasty, tasty morsel. Uh, <laughs> so questions. What, what, the, what do they want to know about Solomon Kane? There's all sorts of stuff. Robinson Crusoe, Monty Python, Robinson King Arthur, Robinson Crusoe have been done. Mutiny. Yeah, like, yeah, come King on, Arthur's guys. loads of games like that. Ah, boring. We've done that. Like. Anyway, go on. Questions. What, what are they asking? I love the idea. I love the idea of Coconut, mm. Horses and King Arthur, Monty Python, uh, John Cleese. We're doing a game where it's Faulty Towers. <laughs> we're doing run, a, guys, run a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it was tangential, and I have faith that these guys will actually um, crack it, as it were. Will we tell them if they crack it? Oh, no. you're no, doing it again. Of course, not Oh man, he just gave. <laughs> oh, no. Questions, questions. I questions. have a different view of spoilers. I'm <laughs> like, no, no fun if I don't get fun too. Um, so Helican we'll was asking if Robert E. Howard was still alive and played Solomon Kane, what would his favourite part of the game be? I, I feel this was probably more of Patrice's question. But he liked dress up. He liked essentially cosplay. He was kind of one of the first people really f uh, photographed doing his mafia cosplay and then yeah, yeah, yeah. with his, his group. I wonder if there's anything. Solomon Kane was never really one for donning a disguise. Well, I think though. the I think the uh, I think the idea of, of playing through the characters. Mm -hmm. I think it would be because uh, when you're a writer, you you explore the world. You kind of live in the heads of the characters yeah. and the things. So you and I think the idea the idea that it was another way of exploring those worlds and looking at other things you might have done yeah. or the paths you didn't take because in a in a novel you have to pick one you can't pick six different versions of you know you take the left path or the right one you either go through the swamp or the moors and you can't do both mm -hmm. but no you can yeah. and I think that will be I think you would have found that interesting you've broke the chat by the way they're going mad coconut tree forest robin hood says mark you see like, I don't do like spo going, I don't do mad. spoilers very often this but when I do you've broken <laughs> broken the chat so um, yes, I agree with you. I, I think the the opportunity to explore all the things that he didn't do would, would absolutely and, and you couldn't thing. do yeah. in that form yeah. that you can do in this. I think that would have would have been interesting for him. So Andre Roots asks, will you be adding a type of insert for the recommended or chronicle chronological order in which the stories can be played? Uh, on the website, we'll, I think I, we could I, definitely yeah, have a downloadable we, thing that people can it, get it access It sounds to. like, yeah, it sounds like a, a, a download on there or an article somewhere or, you know, that yeah, kind of I, thing. It's worth discussing, but I think it's, as I said, there is no definitive, final, provable version because at least some of the stories simply have no context to give you any reference. They don't mention dates very often. Yeah. And because Solomon Cain never changes, there's not really beyond beyond him having the longer staff or not. There's oh almost no way of knowing when where the, where they all <laughs> appear. Just, I don't think anyone is listening to us in chat anymore. No, you I don't think so. No, absolutely wrecked it. Dragon Ball Z, Now I'm Hungry, Tropical Vacation, Monkey King, Judge Dredd, and Tahiti. Are we getting any closer? As I'm saying, no, we're not allowed to say oh when we're getting man. closer or not. That's that. Okay, okay. I'm going to keep going through questions. You guys are just going to have to keep. Up. Just, wh when you've finished playing with the coconuts then yeah. uh, Rob then asked were there any teasers coming after the Alpha Wolf I think I gave a little bit about what you're going to expect I'm not going to say anything else there's still an exciting um, last six days left um, yeah, yeah there's more stuff that's, there's more stuff that's all we've I'm given you say. an awful lot of stuff on the stretch goals but we haven't quite finished yet <laughs> so Drek asks so one thing that often happens with Kickstarter games is that the expansions don't get as much as t 
the attention as the core and scenarios um, end up feeling, oh sorry, as the core box, I think you mean to say, oh, okay. and the scenarios end up feeling underdeveloped or imbalanced. How much attention are Solomon Kane expansions getting in playtesting? Uh, well, we've started playtesting them. Well, we're, we're, we're trying to, um, well, I mean, the, as you see, the ones we've been playing are kind of scattered yep. in different, we've actually gone back to the core box for um, the next playthrough. Mm -hmm. But the ones uh, ones we were doing before, uh, the I mean the one you played with Kalina and, yep, and, was, and Darius uh, Wings was of the from night. yeah Wings of the Night. Um, I think the the thing to remember is that the, from you know we know that people everybody gets the core box, so that has to be the first thing we focus on to make sure that's as good as it can be. But after that, people can get stuff in any order, so everything else is is equal. And I think the the idea is to get the core box done because that's got the core rules in and everything builds off that so that needs to be as solid as possible and then basically the the team will be kind of doing everything at the same time so uh, in terms of dealing with going through each each uh, each story each core mm -hmm. each expansion box yep. uh, so there's not really a kind of order of preference in that in that sense everything kind of has to be done to the same standard yeah no, um, nothing is going to be rushed. It will all be well treated the, the same the, way. The core box is different because it has the core rules in. Yep. But apart from that, it's the same as everything else. There is, says David, sorry, David Napier, mm. uh, there is a lion in Hills of the Dead. There, yes, is. there is. Any chance a lion mini, mini will make an appearance? Mythic could make a very cool looking lion. Sure we could. Um, mm. <laughs> we did. We had one of the. Uh, we, we have a very large number of miniatures, and um, we had more that we could have made that we didn't in the end because we just had a. a we had to stop somewhere. And the lion is, if I remember rightly, is the lion I'm now actually. I'm now literally going back to the update going because I'm making sure that I'm not getting confused with stuff that I've seen and not allowed to tell. No. It is a bit confusing, isn't it? There. I'm not sure whether the fight against the lion is actually in passing in hindsight or whether it's actually happens live as it were. Both Jake I and remember. I are very cautiously trying not to give anything away. <laughs> we are, yes, we're just we're dancing yeah. on the topic. Um, because one or two things that you haven't seen have been made and some of them weren't right and aren't going to be used. And we can give an example of that actually that came up today. Um, we had originally, um, we originally you sculpted. We, we, yeah, we originally sculpted um, and and made um, and even looked at putting into the game uh, a mini for uh, an Iron Maiden. We did. If you were at Cannes, one of the first times, the first time actually we showed off Solomon Cain, mm. uh, we had the Iron Maiden at Beasts of War, we also had it. Um, and it's something that we played around with, but it's, we're not sure we're going to need it for the final game. There's things that have replaced it. There, there are more interesting things that we thought we could do with the number of minis that we could squeeze in. Um, everything that we, every piece of art we do, every bit of concept and every mini doesn't necessarily make it into the, the final box. No, no. If it doesn't add to the, to the well, core and, game. And some things we, we did as tests and some things we, you know, at, at the end of the day, we've, we've got to be able to fit the things on molds, get the things in production and, and make it all work yeah. um, commercially as well as in terms of game, ludographically. Ludographically? <laughs> I may have made that up. <laughs> I was wondering. Uh, I was like <laughs> um, but no, it, in, we, there are lots of different kind of metrics you have to have that, that things have to pass through. So uh, being a nice mini doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make it into the final version. Yeah. Um, sometimes, uh, especially with especially with scenery in this, we have so many characters, so many different individuals in all sorts of aspects of the di of the many many stories, that with a sort of limited sculpting budget and a limited production budget, we were um, we had to pick and choose in some cases. So whilst <laughs> it I'm frantically doing some research what right now. What are you doing? Um, you just keep filling me time. Keep, me keep filling time. Okay. As I, uh, so yes. Anyway, so so we have we have the uh, in the end we decided that the, uh, the the bits of scenery were taking up space that whilst it was nice we could give you another figure. So we could give you another uh, you know Lacosta or or some more some more characters who were actually doing something in rather than just standing there looking pretty 
they were doing something in the scenario. They were, they were giving you um, a hard time in a fight, or they were causing trouble, or they were running away from you, or they were, you know, they were basically making the gameplay happen. Whereas the scenery makes it pretty, but doesn't actually do anything on the whole. I can neither confirm nor deny there will be a lie. End of. <laughs> okay, Mo we can on. neither moving confirm on. nor deny. <laughs> The CIA can neither confirm nor deny the presence or absence of any lion or lioness at any point. <laughs> or tiger. Stefan the Moth Ristic says, Do you already have inspiration and ideas on creating more expansions for Solomon Cain in the future beyond what you made for this company? I know a bunch yep. of commenters have talked about the comics, they've talked about other writing, other characters of Robert yep. E. Hard, but also other, I guess what you'd call non-canon stories by other yep. authors, which features Solomon, we, that we don't have the license for, but yeah. there's definitely more space for growth. There, there is, and, and um, <coughs> there was one, there are one or two bits of Solomon Kane's, of, sort of Robert Howard's, corpus of, of, of work on Solomon Kane that we haven't done, that we could do if we came back to. So um, the Children of Asher needed a whole bunch of minis that was going to be separate and not fit with anything else. So that is not. So we haven't done the so Children we can't of Asher. So I we know that's been a question. Children of asking. Asher doesn't really, we need way too much other stuff for one single story. So that would have ended up having to be greatly expanded to be a box on its own just to work and that was not really practical yeah. at the time. So we, we had lots more obvious things and, and straightforward things to do that we could do without having to double the price of a pack just to do all yeah. the extra bizarre things that were in it. Plus, I don't think that's finished either. No, it was if a I remember rightly, ending, it, was, yeah. it was fragments, a big fragment. It's one of the, uh, it looked like it was going to be a novel yeah. uh, rather than some of the other ones which look like they're going to be just, just as novellas or short stories. But that, that felt like it was going to be quite big because there's a lot of it, and it didn't, still didn't really get past the first act, kind of in terms of story structure. So that was going to be uh, an enormous amount of extra stuff that we thought, well, we've already got quite a lot of things we're making, so let's let's put that to one side, and maybe if we come back and do more Solomon Kane at some other later point, maybe we'll we'll take that as a starting point and do that as a as a big. Leaky set. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, we are just uh, <coughs> 1,700 away from the Alpha Wolf guys. So awesome. Thank oh, you so much cool. for getting us there. It's worth saying, of course, you know, we will never roll out doing more of Solomon Kane in the future, but it is a Kickstarter exclusive at the moment, unless you're lucky enough to get one of the retailers near you who's picked up a retail pledge. That's the only two ways you'll be able to get it at the moment. We cannot confirm anything else. Yeah, so the there, there are not many of those retailers. Nope. If you're retail and you want to jump in, now's the time because it's going out of fashion. Um, Frank asked a couple of questions. First of all, great job, Mythic Games. Thank, Thank you, Frank. You. Um, I, I forgot we were meant to. Uh, I should be saying Frank writes in. You see, you see, so we, uh, I have not been. I've not been giving you the opportunity to uh, to phrase or create this. Um, Frank says, any chance of seeing some mock-ups of the main storybook format, included information, etc. We will definitely have some of that for you in the future, Frank. Absolutely. Um, at the moment, I think we're prioritizing, obviously, keeping the campaign energy going. But we will have some examples, and we will share them with you via an update. Um, is it going to be before the end of the campaign? Probably it not. It just depends. Yeah. I don't know. The, the, um, the amount of stuff that the, um, it, it doesn't always, maybe you don't realize quite how much graphics work running a campaign is. but. All the graphics you see on the uh, updates, all the graphics on the main page, excuse me, um, on the main page, ha are constantly being updated and changed and amended and so on, because we have a very large, complicated set of information to impart. And Kickstarter has a limit on how much stuff you can put on the main page, so we can't just keep adding. When we add stuff, we have to take other things out and rearrange the things. The day that I tried to add the video game play, mm -hmm. I had to keep <laughs> deleting a word at a time, trying to make the sentence shorter and shorter, because Kickstarter was like, nope, you've used too many words there, buddy. And nope. I was like, oh, come on. Yep. <laughs> yes, and, it's something and we so, struggle with. And so, the, yeah, so, so that means that the graphics team is, is busy flat out trying to make sure that everything is kept on the page in the order it needs to be, and all the graphics are done for the updates and all of that. So when they have time, we can get them on uh, on some other stuff, but um, you've still broken the chat. The chat's still going. It's still like broken. Chris is saying, who's asking stuff? Everyone's thinking about coconuts now. <laughs> like this, just well, 
<laughs> I told you. I had. I, I did, did, you nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Oh man. I don't. I don't often do spoilers, but when I do. <laughs> so Frank had a second question. Okay, Frank. Have you considered? <laughs> nice. Have you considered subtle random variations in tiles used in an adventure to increase the way a chapter feels upon multiple plays? For example. Roll a determination, die result, and use tile 30, or roll a pain, die result, to use tile 31. Uh, we do have one or two. The, the Actually, in the Beast of Bordeaux, that has a random setup mm -hmm. uh, scenario um, because we're actually expecting people to play that more than once within the context of a single act, which is, I think, unique so far. Um, because you're searching through the forest trying to find things and there's a bit of a time pressure there and so on as well. Um, in terms of, I hadn't thought about doing that because we tend to think very particularly about exactly which tile we're using because the tiles are all going to end up with different, uh, different layouts of the areas and so how many areas you put on is how many s movement points away from wherever you need to be going you are. Mm -hmm. And that often makes a very big difference to how the stories are laid out. So randomly swapping in different tiles will change the number of areas you're in. So we'll kind of mess with the balance of, of, of yeah. the way the story's gone. So I think it's unlikely we'll have enough tiles of the right artwork and the right number of areas to really do that with very often. It's certainly worth exploring. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't see it actually working because we've got s the, the tiles tend to be very specific mm -hmm. and um, and not all interchangeable. It is worth saying you will have not just different starting locations for miniatures uh, depending on the chapter and how you've entered it, but you could also have different tile layouts depending on how you've entered a scene. Oh yeah, yeah. Whether yeah. you're chasing or fighting or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and different and different positions for the shadows and different positions for. Uh, explorations or so other other individuals or uh, basically anything yeah. is variable including the tiles that you're on and their orientation so the randomization is kind of happening behind the scenes yeah depending it's, it's on what depending on which bit of the, which version of the chapter a b c or d you get to um everything could be different jimmy guessed it right by the way i'm going to say right now jimmy got the coconut reference we're oh. doing uh, coco chanel leo's bringing oh. out a perfume that is our new kickstarter coming uh, later this year announced here officially <laughs> leo has Le Leo. Le Leo. Le Leo. Le Leo. The smell of Leo, man. You wonder how he, he, he stays so active. It's S snorting Le Leo. Snorting Le Leo. Le Leo. Leo Chanel. I don't know what Leo Chanel. Coco, the character from Mulholland Drive. Oh my goodness, there's some gap. There's some last gaps. Um, what was I also going to say about the randomized tiles? It's gone from my head now. If it comes back to me, I'll. Um, Dorthonian says Dorthonian, yeah. should England have played Solomon Cain against Belgium asking for a friend <laughs> is that match when, when is that match is it been and gone uh, yeah I think it was I yesterday wasn't was it, it yesterday oh yes I think it was lost. yesterday they did lose. and, and oh. we lost which means we're in the last 16 playing not Japan no, not Japan man what a Cameroon someone, or something one of, one of our know. ambassadors today I don't sent watch me football even I know this one of one of ambassadors the other day, Toby, sent me an amazing gif of uh, here. Look and see Germany's highlights of uh, the World Cup. Thanks for watching. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, it, it tickled me in a way that I wasn't proud of, but it was funny. Um, I don't know why I'm Germany looking at this right now. A good World Cup. England is playing Colombia. That's not a bad matchup, actually. To be fair, it could one be one of worse. those C words. France and Argentina. Oh, France could be in for a rough time tomorrow. France and Argentina. Brazil and Mexico, Mexico have been playing well. What a great South American. So I, I have I got no distracted idea. completely. I have no idea. I, ha I, don't, I don't watch. Yeah. I'm, I'm busy doing this. I don't. I watched the, the South the South Korea uh, Germany game. Uh, I think that's like the only game I actually caught. Um, I actually caught all World Cups. Anyway, right. Well, that's an entire game more than I watched. Beto says, "Hi." Hi, hi, Beto. Are you guys considering the idea of offering a big box to put all Solomon Cain expansions in one single box? So that not, would be so a not big just, box. Not just everything <laughs> we've unlocked through stretch goals, but actually every single expansion. That would be a big box. Would it be? He does say, would it be too big or the cost too high? It would be awesome if you offered one here at Kickstarter. How oh, would that? I mean, 
I think we can safely say at the moment that depending again on how much you guys unlock, we're talking, it's not going to be as big as Joan of Arc. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as big as Joan of Arc. It was 40 kilograms if you went all in on Joan of Arc. But it's going to be, it's going to be more than half of it. Um, would we put all that? I don't, I don't, I think it would be too You'd break shelves. I, yeah, you really I, would. Well, I think you'd break yeah. boxes. I'm not yeah. sure. I, I mean, oh, there's yeah, a, yeah, there's a limit to how much you, you can weight you can put in a box yeah. and have it not just fall apart. Yeah, just horrible yeah, boring. I, I think because they have to be very big and the bigger they get, the cardboard's only so strong. Um, interestingly, I love our box designs at the moment. When you look at the side of the boxes, when I think about putting them on their sides and the shelves with each little depiction of the story and each part of Solomon as he's fighting the vampires or he's in Africa, like I love that actually. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the expansion boxes and how they've been done, so I'm okay with that. Um, let's see, we have a few more questions have come in while we've been chatting. They have, we best get moving to uh, them. Farshaz says, any other examples of new actions triggered with discoveries? <laughs> Discovery <laughs> cards. Um, like them, them townsfolk things. move where dice rolls will be utilised. Um, any more examples of those? Well, we've got the, of the ones you've seen, we've got the sorry i thought there was potentially one over there that we could we could just sneakily bring in but no that's not that's not got a dice roll on it um so i think it was with dice roll well you're having a thing do you mean so yeah. do you mean ones where you have um dice on dice uh, becoming yes, a new he, action he means a discovery card which opens up gives you a new, new action. action oh okay right um well there, there's there's quite a few actually mm -hmm. Um, the, we, we sometimes use the same one again or similar things again yeah. because we want to be able to to sneak or whatever. The, what what we use that for is we come back to the previous question about how how can you play when they're, they're the same every time. We use it to rebalance that mix if it matters particularly for that story, yeah. for that scenario. Uh, so if you've got an awful lot of talking you need to do and we said, well, maybe we give you an access to a new talk action that everybody can use. If you need to do a lot of running around, maybe a new, a new movement action like we had in the yep. suit and the flight. Um, so it basically allows us to do that kind of thing, to, to again, tweak the balance on an individual basis. And that's what, that's what really they're for. The discovery cards are for making the individual scenarios more characterful and more, more whatever they're supposed to be, to, to push that particular envelope in one direction or another without giving you that set of rules for every single scenario all the way through. Because if you do, then it becomes more difficult to finesse the balance and the character of the next one because you've already done something else in another direction. So rather than give you all of these extra actions and change the way the character virtues work each, each time, sorry, for all time, mm -hmm. we just use that in the individual chapters. So more of whatever you can do in whatever area is appropriate for that story. And we've pretty much gone in every direction yep. you can go in. I'll give the specific example from the one that we are going to film, because we will be showing that before okay. the end of the campaign. So in the Blue Flame of Vengeance, there's a specific scene. Uh, I talked about this earlier, where I said you can essentially use a test to intimidate. Now, this is not in the rules at the moment, because it's still going through play testing. There, we've done this scenario multiple times, even with myself, outside of Babis and Deal and Steve and Jake. And there's a particular card which lets you do this verbal joist joisting, this witty banter. And there is a dice that you place on the discovery card that any virtue can do. However, you're not allowed to use faith symbols as wild for it. You must get this a determination for the specific card and you must use a determination and determination only for it, which makes it slightly more difficult um, to do, but not impossible, of course, with your re-rolls and your flips. And there's and three your potential outcomes. From your friends and yeah. all the other stuff. Um, and it's, yeah, exactly. And it's going to trigger this opportunity for Solomon to basically engage in kind of a threatening or kind of interaction um, vocally with an opponent. And there's three potential outcomes from this, one of which is negative. Like he's trying to talk down someone who's attacking him and gain a verbal advantage and be intimidating. And actually, it ends he up just winding just the other makes person. makes annoyed, yeah. Um, and you end up having a negative effect. You wouldn't then, like him when he's angry. Yeah. <laughs> there's then a second effect, which is marginally positive and then a further third effect which is much better very 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 good and is going to really help you with any subsequent actions and that is available throughout the entire chapter for each one of the virtues to use um, and it w is tailored for that chapter and it's got a theme and it's got some flavor text and stuff and everything that's on there that's going to set the scene for what's going on because um, Solomon Cain will not be witty bantering with a gorilla 
maybe he will, but it's not going to go very well, but he will when they win a banter with the likes of uh, pirates. So um, that's something you'll see change throughout all the chapters. Farshaz, hopefully that's given you some information. You will see that before the end of the campaign. Still, the coconut stuff is happening. Mark said, do you think the tiles could be used for D&D games, specifically 3.5e? Mark, I absolutely do. 3.5e still used, did it use a grid? Or was it 4th edition definitely had grid? I didn't play much of 3rd or 3.5. I, um, I love the boards and I generally look at this and I think cobalt lair. I think cobalts are in here, we've got to go find. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why not? Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. know, this is totally where there is yeah. a, a shard of some power relic that's being mined by some, some kobolds yeah, unknowingly. some bad guys in here somewhere. Um, yeah. So, yes, I, I, I'm not sure of D&D 3.5 rules myself, but I know multiple people have said it's about if, using yeah, these for... I mean, if, if the movement rules work with the areas, then absolutely no reason why not. Use them for whatever you want. Yeah, Just absolutely. not as placemats. Um, you can use them as placemats. They want to could, buy them as yeah. placemats. They're probably quite the price is playing the place fans, but <laughs> <laughs> um, Hazel asked what is the thickness of the player boards at the moment our prototype ones are about two mil these one mil. these ones are I'd say they're two mil two mil board but these are only single layer yeah. oh yes yeah, grab, 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 these are only single layer because you guys will remember you, you know you you guys unlock dual layer thank you very much my favorite I love dual layer boards so just to be very clear for so everyone at home who don't explain dual layer. dual layer is is two sheets of card with holes punched in the top so that you can see uh, so you have recesses so that for example these these areas with the uh, with, with the, the yeah. dice on you know that yeah. one yeah. these these areas with the dice on would be recessed cut, cut through the top one recessed so that you can place the the dice in the little slots it's it's one of those things that just makes me happy inside yeah for me too. I have no idea why it should make thank you for that much difference that. but yes um, so, so that that's this is a two mil board and it's only one thickness so I suspect it will either be one or two mil board at the bottom so it's three or four mil thick they're quite chunky things that the dual layer boards um, Holler said, will it be possible to have in PDF the tile pictures for playing tabletop RPGs online or the pics are awesome and can be used in the likes of drive through RPG or Roll20? I love the Roll20 system, an amazing system and you're right, these would be great for that. Not sure whether that's something that's going to be realistic though. don't know. I mean um, the, 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 uh, the difficulty here is that we are doing a licensed product and so the rights and ownership of things like that yep. aren't always just ours to do with what we want so we can certainly think about it we can talk about it and and see what if anything people yep. want to do uh, i mean we'll, we'll find out and we'll let you know when we do yeah um, i mean i must i must admit um joining the mythic team just in february as you guys probably know and um, recently um, this, in terms of licensed product and IP, has gone really smoothly. Like, I think we, we've been very open with you guys they about everything. Yeah, um, the, the cabinet guys are really, really helpful. I mean, you, you, if you follow, um, if you follow Kickstarter like we do, you will know of various horror stories people have had to do with licensees and licensors, and um, we've had none of that. It's been just as easy as it could have been, yeah. uh, which is which is just lovely and. <laughs> We, we hope we don't meet anyone at the other end of the scale, <laughs> but it still means it's still a different process and it still means that we need to get stuff uh, approved and it still means that the, the ownership of things is not ours, it belongs yep. to the license holder. So it, it means what we can do is slightly different and, and the freedoms to do it with without checking with someone else mm -hmm. are rather more limited. But we can certainly ask, see what, the, what that is. And I should say, don't ever feel afraid to suggest crazy mad yeah, things. Yeah, we love yeah. secret suggestions. I know Time of Legends has many different requests made for the Joan of Arc and the Time of Legends franchise to move on to other eras and other games and other IPs. We love when you guys suggest stuff because we talk about it all the time in the office, potential games and licenses and things to go over. Um, and we love hearing your ideas we as do. well. We've got all sorts of, and, and lots of, we, we do what we can. I mean, we do like listening to ideas because we have no monopoly on the, the good, good, good suggestions. And uh, we do what we can to put in what we, you know, what, what we can of the, the ideas we get. Can't do everything, but we certainly do some of it. 
Helikin must have a camera in our offices. He nailed the coconuts. They can kill the coconuts from outer space. Nailed it, man. Absolutely. Oh, it'd nailed take it. him longer to Seriously, get it. Seriously, come on, man. I can't believe it. It'd take him longer. <laughs> uh, Roger has a request for us. It says, Hi, Yaz. Hi, Jack. Hi, Roger. Uh, can we say to support the French tomorrow against Argentina, Allez, le Blues. Come on, the Blues. Allez le bleu. Allez le bleu. Allez le bleu. Should it be allez le bleu? Allez le bleu. Allez le bleu. Allez le bleu. We yes, we would very much love it, um, because we don't like putting Leo against televised French uh, football. That's a hard. I know Leo is far. You know, because it's just think of all those thousands and thousands. Leo's not alive viewers. tomorrow, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> uh, think of all those thousands of viewers that the that football match mean. doesn't get because Leo is live. I know? know it would be. It would just down it, 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 for yeah, the team. I mean, then the whole uh, team would just be feel let down, yeah, and so the crowd wasn't behind them, and. <laughs> Couldn't do that to the team, not the national team. I'm sure if we emailed the team, oh, did someone did someone yeah, selfie, someone but I missed it? Say, I'm yeah, sorry, I missed your selfie. Do it again, uh, do it again. Do it again. Uh, can I selfie? I have no idea. Well, this is risky, I've just hit it now. <laughs> Go wow. It's not wanting to send me selfie. Anyway, um, so yeah, I wonder I wonder if we uh, sent Leo to the football match, would he get free tickets? I'm sure he would. Um, okay. Frank says, you discussed a mat. Would it be simply be decorative, saying that the game relies on tiles? Yes, we will have a neoprene mat available during the pledge manager for anybody that would like that very pretty upgrade. Um, and yes, it's going to be primarily de decorative. I, th I um, thought the idea was it would have places for all of yeah. these. So it would have places for all the stacks ben and Ben Wan, I talk about that a little bit. I don't bit. know. I, and I, the tricky thing is, you, if you play on a square table, I play on a rectangular table, Ben plays on a round you're wrong. table. <laughs> you know what? You have to play yeah, on you're the correct shape geometrical table shape. <laughs> it's going to be an octagonal. It's, uh, it's going to be complicated to get one that fits, one size that fits yeah. all. Um, so yes, I think that we could potentially do something with the tracks. We could potentially do something with... Yeah. Uh, Tricky. We'll have to see. Yeah. I mean, there are there are. We'll have to see how big um, we can make the the mat. If I remember rightly from looking at previous ones, there is a huge cost jump when you get to a certain size because it's to do with the machines they print them on. And if you get if you get beyond a certain size, then suddenly the cost doubles. And okay. th may maybe that was just the one supplier mm -hmm. we were talking to, yeah. but there was a a very distinctive point at which you go you can have it this big and it's a reasonable price and then as soon as you go an inch bigger yeah. it doubles in price and you go oh <laughs> so, <laughs> so and then it stops becoming reasonable so it's it depends and that was that's just a production cost there's, there's no way around that so and, oh, unless man. we have different printers now robert is on the closest line so far that's all i'm going to say he says true fact the title of cool runnings in check is coconuts in the snow is it? Apparently. Sounds a bit wrong, but okay. That, that, um, sounds, that sounds... Sounds very wrong, Robert. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's factually correct, but your, your line of thinking is interesting. Um, Luis, uh, no, we've got that one going through. You're just going to see. Wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking through everyone's questions. I think we've covered most of them. I think there is... Good job. Do, 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 do. Let's see. There's some more at the bottom. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Here's some more. Javier says... Oh, this is directly to you, Jack. He's talking right at you. Hello, Javier. In as you are the designer and you know every card and every text, that means the game is spoiled for you. It or does. Or do you think you can enjoy it alike with everyone else? He's really interested to know the answer. I very rarely play games that I've designed after they've been published because I have spent months or years <laughs> staring at the detail of them and I have probably had enough by the time it gets to print um, that's just in general yeah. it's not in, in so on the game I think I can I mean I have been playing an awful lot of it and I'm still enjoying it because as I was saying earlier it's not just telling the story people have got people seem to have got hung up on the idea that there is a story and that's the only thing that you would ever play the game for is to unlock the story and see mm. what happens next it's actually a fun game to play it's like Many games can be described as puzzles, where you have to work out how to get certain resources together and certain cards in the right sequence to mm -hmm. get people working together in the right order to get certain things to happen. And so that puzzle is still engaging and, and playing with my friends is still engaging whether I know what's going to happen or not. And what I do these days is, is we either play, because we're playtesting, we're kind of getting things to a certain point and then deliberately picking 
different paths just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm playing with people who don't know the scenario I'm playing um, or the, the, you know, the, the story we're doing, I'll, I'll step back a little when it comes to making critical decisions and let them decide to just see, to which, see just what, to they see do, what they yeah, do yeah. and see which way they go. So it's still fun to play in that sense. But uh, to be honest, when I, by the time we get by the time we get to the end of the process and it's been printed and it's been shipped across the country and I will be so deep into three other games that I probably won't have the time or inclination to go back mm. to You'll be developing the next two or anything things, else. Yeah. I'll be several down the line and... Um, it's the life yeah. of a game designer has far less actual finished product game playing than you'd ever imagine. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as I said, playing playing games that I designed, very rarely do I go back and get it. When I get a finished production copy yeah. of things, almost never play them. Yeah. You know it inside out. You'd well, rather spend your time playing other well, designer other, stuff. Other, yeah, that's right. I'd rather play something that, that I don't know anything about, that everybody thinks is cool, that, that you know is, is exciting and fresh to me, because I have, I have it's actually, it's not so much the, the gameplay that is, is, uh, is it? It's it's the fact that it's the fact that it's a little bit confusing and not quite how I remember it, mm -hmm. because I know not only I know the idea I had when I started, the vision I had for it, and it's never the same as when you what you end up with ever. And I think this is true whether you paint or write music or whatever. When you create something, it's never the same in that first flush of your mm -hmm. imagination, and when you've finished making it a physical product, people can people can get and play. Um, so there's that slight disconnect for me that won't be the same for anyone else. But there's also, I've played every single version that there ever was of it. So when you ask me what a rule is, when you say I know all the rules, I know all the rules you will ever see, plus several hundred other versions. <laughs> that aren't, don't that aren't, make that it in. Don't actually make it in. That all the, there were, and then they were replaced. So when you, it's, it's, people always think that game designers know all the rules really well. And I, my experience is they don't. They're really bad people I've to ask. My experience of filming with Beast of War told me that because yeah. unfortunately they have four versions because they in their head. And they kind of yeah. go, and someone says, what What happens when I do this? And I go, well, it used to be this. Yeah. And on the card it says and this. And on the card it says this. But we've been playtesting this. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's still the rule. Yeah. And, then I think, <laughs> and then there was this other one we were going to go, but then that kind of broke this other bit. But then that was kind of all right because we changed the other bit as well. <laughs> and then you just go like, at least it's still broken. <laughs> so Jack is far more cryptic, cryptic than any of you guys are currently being in the space of your I mean I've been enjoying this chat but it's literally just coconuts versus minions Battlestar coconut Star Wars coconuts pocket guard coconuts yep. the wheel of coconuts stranger coconuts I find you, the coconut I told you when I do spoilers <laughs> coco nut coco nut coco nut and then meanwhile Joseph is like we're nearly at the stretch goal we've nearly got the <laughs> alpha wolf which um we were waiting on being approved. I'm pretty sure it probably has been approved at this point. Yes, it has. Yes, yes, it has. So as soon as that stretch goal has hits, been approved, uh, you're going to hopefully see that uh, mini if everyone in France is still awake and not. Yeah, I've, I've written the update for this. Uh, uh, the <laughs> the guys told me it was all ready to go as soon as as soon as we get to the stretch goal limit. Apparently, it's all ready to roll. And um, sorry, uh, Javier, if our our answers aren't great for translation. Your 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 answer was really awesome. But I think for translation purposes, it was a little tricky. Which one was that? Uh, that, that one all about playing different <laughs> games and different rules and uh, different versions. Oh, OK. I think we're getting close to the end, guys. I think we're going to be wrapping up soon. We've been up for an hour and 37 minutes already. Well, wow. in, in t if we want to go back and make it simpler, yes, I think you can play. And I could and, and do replay the game most days. Mm -hmm. And. If it was a game, I, I don't want to design. I know when I start off, I am going to have to play the game several hundred times. So I'm not going to design a game that I'm going to get bored with after five goes, yep. because otherwise I'm just making my life a living <laughs> hell. <laughs> when I know I'm going to have to come in every day and play the same tedious rubbish again and again yep. and again. So I don't make games like that. Mm -hmm. I, always play ga I always make games that I can play yep. repeatedly. Uh, Javier was saying actually so it wasn't your translation it was actual people who are translators unfortunately get the game spoiled for themselves a little bit oh uh, yeah yeah uh, well. anyone yeah. who goes through the whole thing yes that's right if you're a translator and you have to go through everything you are unfortunately stuck because you have to read unless you can translate with your eyes closed <laughs> I've just purged your memory 
Um, Life Stenson says about the playmats, rather than having just one big playmat, maybe it would make more sense to have several small playmats for the, play for the, for the virtual player boards, uh, to replace the cardboard ones, but they're dual layered cardboard ones. Uh, they had dual something uh, in the Pathfinder Adventure card game. See, I think it makes sense for card games. I think card I'm games not make replacing sense to my have dual layer boards. Yeah, but because we're actually <laughs> no popping steam, dice down no and we're swapping cards in the night. Thinking neoprene. Yeah, I, I must admit, I I am going to keep my dual yeah. layer boards. Thomas M asked, "Is it possible for you to disclose the sleeve package the presentation, I presume, and mat details and prices during the campaign, so we can add to our pledge for stretch goals?" That's a really, really nice sentiment, Thomas. Thank you for that. Um, Interesting idea, but I don't think we've got cost. Yeah, I, again, because as we alluded to just momentarily, uh, a short while ago, we need to confirm what sizes we're going for and what's going to work. So unfortunately, if we, if we could do that, we would, but it doesn't. It's not going to work right now. I'm afraid. Arch Angel Vernon says, "Any possibility of the ability to buy additional sets of Virtue mini minis just to models? They're such beautiful sculpts, and can think of lots of ways to paint them. So it'll be interesting to get an extra set without having to buy a full extra game." Do you want to go into I'm afraid. The I'm afraid no is the short answer because the because of the way these are produced. Uh, what we do is we. Uh, plan a series of molds that will make the whole product. So individual pieces, they, they're not, they're designed to make all of the miniatures in the core game in one set. They're not designed to make just the virtues or just the tribal warriors or just the townsfolk. So what, what that means is things can be in strange combinations on different, uh, on different molds because they don't need to be broken up in any other way. They're designed to just be made as a, all the miniatures that go in this box, all the miniatures that go in that box. So the smallest we could even think of doing in any practical way is all the miniatures in one box yeah. would be a thing we could do. And even that would be kind of a problematic thing to do. Because it's in yeah, adding whole way. extra types of handling and shipping yeah. and um, packing and new boxes needing made. We're, we're just, you know, we're not a, we're not set up to be a miniatures company, unfortunately. We are a board game primarily, despite yeah. the amazing minis we focus it's, on doing. But it's, I mean, they're, but they're, they're at the end of the day, they are part of a, the process of making a board game. So they're a component for the board game. So the component is the tray of all the miniatures that go in it. So it's um we've just hit our stretch goal. Way. Way. Well done, guys. Well done. Uh, Coconut Dings says Helikin. Thank you so much, everybody. We've just hit eight hundred and eighty-eight thousand so dollars. You now have the complete Beast of Bordeaux adventure to add it to every core box. If you get core box, you get that. If you get all the stretch goals and so on, apply. If you get another one for your friend. So you've got the ogre, the Witchfinder General, and Beast of Bordeaux all added to the core box. Yes. Love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. I'm just doing. Just show up in your head. Count on my fingers how many acts <laughs> you've got. That's yeah. eleven acts or twelve if you've got a dirty bird. Oh and yes, just, so the other right hand of doom as well. Yeah, yeah. Twelve. That, that's that's yeah. Eleven acts or twelve if you've got the early bird, which is. We were talking about this. People were saying like how many how many hours this is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hours. And it's yeah, generally dozens yeah. of hours. But we we're also saying how how many when did you last play a big box game for? Dozens of hours. No, this, this and did you run I, out? Uh, run out of play value. I'm genuinely sad to say that I do not get as many hours to game as I would like to. Mm -hmm. um, we got through about five, four or five sessions of Charterstone, which I thought was pretty good going yeah, before good uh, yeah. work we, took we, over. Ben, ben and I managed, I think, eight <laughs> of Max eight Versus of Minions. Max Versus Minions, I think something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't quite get to the end of it. Um, let's have a quick look to see if we have any. Um, how about resin figures of the virtues could be done separately, maybe again, probably. Actually, let me say something, I'll say something. I am very interested, I'll throw this out to you guys. We do listen, we absolutely do listen. Um, and I personally am a big fan of things like event specials, conventions, big, big essence, Gen Con be, yeah. big fan of that stuff. Um, I'm curious to know, like for example, if we had, you know, 500 sets of just some minis or something made up for a convention, you know, would you guys be interested? So don't stop throwing the ideas out because we're listening, we hear you. With the Dragon and Joan of Arc, we knew there was an overwhelming demand for it. So we, you know, we made it so people could buy multiple versions um, and get that on its own. 
we, we always will look and listen to you guys, so please throw them at, but you have to understand we have the, the business side of things, the, the manufacturing the side. The logistical kind of, and, and, and it's, we wouldn't want to, it's not practical for us to make all the stuff in the core box and then throw away everything except the virtues just so we can sell the virtues. That would be silly and rather wasteful. Um, is the Alpha Wolf Lelou in his ultimate form? <laughs> Lelou is the well, ultimate form. Lelou is the ultimate right, form of Lelou. <laughs> They, like, have you seen, I must admit, the African Lulu, the African with the Lulu, shirt really, woman, and yeah, like, it I, keeps I, his hat on. I think he looks kind of oh, very, very debonair in the European version, but I think the African one's like, I just, I've, I've had enough of being swag, yeah. I'm just going to be her badass. Um, maybe asked already, it says uh, Farshaz, but any plans for a companion app that may help with aspects of the game save chapter cards? So we can say that it is not something that we have currently planned. It's not in, in the Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. plan at all. However, we have had a few different um, people reach out to us, but as we mentioned before, it is a licensed product. We are dealing with an IP, so we have to treat these things carefully. At the moment, nothing is planned, but I know the community has done a fantastic soundtrack uh, that's currently being shared. Alchemy, you can share that for me, please, buddy. Um, Alchemy tried to, do you, know, do you know what we will not do? We do not negotiate with terrorists, because Alchemy in the chat tried to bribe me, tried to, to blackmail me, actually is a better word, into giving up spoilers by sharing the picture of Karina and I uh, when I said to Karina that I didn't like it enough to put a ring on it. <laughs> and, uh, I don't remember that. It one. was during the live stream and, and Alchemy tried to blackmail me and I said, nope, I'm just going to share that with everybody. And it's currently on my Facebook, uh, Karina's uh, amazingly shocked face at me. <laughs> <laughs> making terrible relationship choices. Yes, I've, I've come to regret. Right, we're going to finish up with quite possibly the most pertinent question of the night. I think the question that's going to really show where the comments have been, at least for the last 45 minutes. Zolt says, is Jake fully aware of the horrors he has wrought upon chat, coconut wise? Yes. I, 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 spent, um, I, I spent quite a long time in the chat, in the comments on... Uh, on Mythic Battles and uh, Joan of Arc. And one of the things I learned to do was um, was to understand quite how good you were at dealing with spoilers. So if you, I, if I want to tell you something, I just tell you it. If I want to tease, then have to be really obscure, otherwise you guys will get it in five seconds. So, you know, I learned the hard way, taught by the experts. I'm going to be in the comments for the next three hours. Once, ah, we, get, ah, once we get wrapped ah, up here, ah, I'm going to be in the comments ah, until midnight tonight. How many, I'm going to how go many home. times do you think the word coconut will be used? I'm going to go home. I'm going to give myself a really stiff drink <laughs> <laughs> coffee. Um, and I'm going to see where you guys get to because you need to dig much deeper than you're currently doing. You're scratching the surface. And, and you're not allowed to tell them if they get it right. You're not allowed to tell them if they get it right. Right. I think You're we're not gonna, even allowed to hint if they get it right. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, thank you for engaging with this. As ever, your questions were all fantastic. It was great to have a sit down and talk about the rules and the meat of the game. Not just the gorgeous minis, of course, but also what's going to make Solomon Cain really something special and really something super unique to what else is out there. Anybody who can make it, two big events coming up for your calendar. So you've got 14th of July, Saturday the 14th of July, War Boar Games in Bromley in London. We will be there myself. Jack, Leo as well, plus a whole ton of our Even team. And um, we're hoping to have a couple of members from the team across from, across from Europe as well. So you get to touch Leo. We will be spoiling stuff on the 14th of July at War War. We'll be showing some things that will not have been seen anywhere else um, for future things coming from Mythic Games. Also, if you're in France or wish to travel to France on the 8th of September, uh, it's a Saturday as well, in the south of France in Courier, we will be having a Mythic Day, I believe, over half, if not two thirds, of the tickets have gone. It is only a hundred tickets. We're going to have nearly every member of the Mythic Games team there. I think we're going to have um, fifteen of us. It was a couple, unfortunately, who can't make it, who have other obligations. But fifteen of the Mythic Games team will be there. There will be a Joan of Arc tournament. There will be demos, of course, of Joan of Arc and Solomon Kane, and there will be demos, all being well, um, of other future things, coconut related. Um, and we're going to be at Gen Con as well for American we're going friends. To, we are. We're absolutely for non-European Gen Con. friends um, for four days of craziness. Please, if you see me at Gen Con, bring me water. I will be dying. <laughs> 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 um, please, and, uh, and cooling fans. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't bring me coconut water. My 
God, Mark, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> person. Uh, just a Fast, choice. Though. Yeah, Fast. well, it was good. We will be at Essen. We're over double the size of our booth from last year. Yeah, um, taking we, over. Yeah, we will absolutely be at Essen. Looking forward to that. Uh, don't let us hanging like coconuts give us that spoiler. Thank nope. you for tolerating nope. our cookie nuttiness. <laughs> <laughs> this is the craziest stream. You guys are mad. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna leave it. Will you play me out, Jack? I'm gonna. Do I need a new theme song? You, I don't. Yeah, you're gonna have to change it up, right? Go on then. Ba <laughs> <laughs>